a new episode of the Loyalty Expert Voice. My name is Kasia and I have a fantastic guest with me today, all the way from Florida. He's the Director of Education and the Dean of the Loyalty Academy. So please allow me to introduce to you Mike Capizzi. Hi Mike, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi Kasia, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so maybe we can start with you introducing yourself, telling us a little bit more about what your expertise is when it comes to the field of loyalty? Okay. Uh, I'm a veteran of the loyalty marketing industry. Uh, I've got uh, 31 years of experience in CRM and loyalty. Uh, <clears throat> prior to that, I was in uh, other aspects of the marketing services space. Um, I've worked on the um, solution provider side, uh, the mm -hmm. supplier side of the, of the desk. I uh, worked for many leading brands for many, many, many years uh, across uh, 15 different markets around the world. Um, I've done a lot of uh, loyalty design, uh, also technical enablement, analysis, finance, uh, loyalty communications, and uh, started the Loyalty Academy in 2015. Okay, so maybe tell us a little bit more about the Loyalty Academy. Where did the idea came from? Uh, how did it start? It? The, uh, there was a group of people, uh, all of whom were colleagues of mine in, in various loyalty capacities, uh, and we bought the Wise Marketer, uh, which was ah, okay. an online publication for loyalty CRM industry. And we kept seeing the uh, request for some kind of training, some kind of education. Uh, we had done it before in a prior life, and we decided uh, we'd put the academy together so that the core principles and best practices associated with our industry uh, could be um, categorized and mm -hmm. uh, basically turned into a university-like program uh, for loyalty education. Right, so you also give out certificates, right, for your attendings, for the people who are taking part in the Loyalty Academy? Yeah, we do. We, we have a certification program um, Certified Loyalty Marketing Professional, abbreviated CLMP. And it's very rigorous. Uh, you must complete 15 uh, courses of study, 15 different modules, mm -hmm. covering everything from uh, strategy and design, consumer psychology, uh, loyalty finance, um, technology operations, the, the complete end-to-end uh, -end spectrum of things involved in loyalty programs. And after you complete all of your requirements, um, you get a test. And if you can pass the test, the board will certify you. Uh, today there are, let me check my notes here, um, there's 194 professionals today around oh, wow. the world, 24 countries. Uh, so it certainly is a global phenomena, but, uh, but right. the 94, 194 professionals in 24 countries have earned the distinction of a CLMP and I'm very proud to say that uh, two of them are Comark employees. I heard, I heard, but I have two colleagues who graduated Correct. from the Loyalty Academy as well. Right, right. Now, some people, gosh, don't want certification. They just want to take a specific course. Uh, maybe they would like to brush up on loyalty liability okay. or the potential for fraud in a loyalty program or loyalty finance. Um, so some people come in and just take one or two individual courses, but most people go for certification. Well, I think it's interesting because, you know, um, if you ask somebody from outside what loyalty is, they basically think it's just, you know, you get the cards, you get the stamp, and then you have your free coffee. That's all there is about it. But uh, there are not a lot of people who know how deep it can go when it comes to finances, for example, in this case. So I think we need to more of this kind of programs and academies. And, um, and I'm really glad that you have been working on it for so many years now and uh, that it's on the market. So maybe uh, you said it's a global thing. You said you guys are all over the place. Tell me, when it comes to loyalty, I know that when it comes to the program, it's a little bit different when, when we're thinking USA and then we're thinking Europe. 
when it comes to the education, are there any differences between US, between Europe, between Asia? Uh, very few. Um, the principles that govern what makes a loyalty program work are the same um, no matter what culture you're in. And best practices generally are also the same. That's why it's, it's teachable. The um, differences as we move around the world are largely socioeconomic or cultural. Uh, if I come to Poland, um, you and your friends will be doing things a little bit differently than me and my friends will do over here. Uh, but our reaction, the way we think, our behavior, our psychology, pretty much human, doesn't really mm -hmm. matter where we're from. Um, I find that um, these programs exist in every country. Um, the better right. uh, developed loyalty markets in the world are largely English speaking. Um, Australia, New Zealand, UK, Canada, US, those would be the biggest markets. But those are also all markets that are very mature, um, very economically um, uh, developed. Um, you go to certain parts of Asia, uh, there are programs everywhere, uh, every single country, but, um, and same in Latin America, but you have less a percentage of the population um, that is um, economically viable. And uh, that's why you don't see them uh, as often. Uh, but no, I think if, um, if you apply strategic principles and you apply best practices, it doesn't really matter where you are. You just need somebody on the team who's local because of, uh, of culture. Uh, sometimes you run into a little bit of difficulty because something is uh, very unique in one part of the world uh, versus another. Uh, I can imagine, especially when it comes to Asia, because I think Europe is adaptable, but Asia might be different in a lot of ways. So well, I can even imagine that. in Europe, I'll give you an example. I mentioned the yeah. 194 uh, certified professionals around the world, and there are a whole bunch of them in Europe, uh, over 20. Um, but if you look at the map and where they are, um, the Mediterranean side of Europe is, is not represented. So Spain, Italy, oh, okay. Greece. And the primary reason is language. That's all that it is. Where in Czech Republic, Poland, Germany, um, English is very common. You know, I've been over there enough to know that it might not be the preferred language of everybody, but it is certainly very, very, very common. Where in Spain and Italy and Greece, it is much less common. Uh, all our courses are delivered in the English language um, and all our material uh, that we supply the students with the educational material, it's all in English. And um, it makes it uh, difficult for some people, uh, especially like in Latin America. Sure, yes, I, I can imagine that. And you're right, the south of Europe, uh, there are not a lot of people who, who speak English properly. I think it's, it's getting better but um, we'll see where we're going to be in a couple of years. Um, when I'm thinking about uh, companies, for example, who, has a who have a loyalty program and they are looking for a professional to join their company, to run the program, to do the strategic uh, analysis, to uh, manage the program later on, where do you think uh, they could find somebody like this? How do they start to search for a real expert in, to, in today's loyalty world? Well, they certainly could go on our website, Kasha, and look at the existing group of professionals. Um, now, they're all employed. Okay. Uh, they're all employed, but uh, some of them are um, working. So all the people who certified with the Loyalty Academy, they're available at your website, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, you can okay. look up their name and uh, find out where they are. Many of them are consultants. Uh, many of them work for companies like Comark, I would consider to be a, a service provider, uh, even though you're a mm -hmm. technology. Uh, you provide a whole bunch of services around the technology for uh, people to uh, uh, utilize if they're gonna run a program. Um, so right. firms like that are there. There's also people that are on the brand side. I mean, a retail or a telco, um, an airline or a hotel. So you can look at the names and where they are, and that might give you some ideas. And you can reach out to us and we could connect you. Um, I believe that um, networks like the Customer Strategy Network out of the UK, I know you're familiar with them. Um, Comark has done some work with them before. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a fabulous organization. 
that will enable you to reach out directly um, to consultants. I think that um, there are publications like The Wise Marketer, uh, Loyalty Magazine out of the UK would be another. Uh, there are a few in Eastern Europe that cover the industry. That's a great place to put um, an ad uh, for uh, an open position. Um, mm -hmm. I get uh, inquiries every week from somebody in the world um, looking for somebody to help them um, fill a certain position. And uh, we try to put that on a wise marketer so that you can uh, um, get exposed to 10,000 people at once. Nice. Uh, one thing about the wise marketer, which owns the Loyalty Academy, by the way, um, one thing about the wise marketer, it, it is the most um, concentrated loyalty publication in the world. Uh, the audience is all loyalty, all CRM. Okay, and uh, when you think um, the other way around, so we have a young professional who just got into the loyalty field and he would like to learn more. So he just started, he started, for example, working at Comarque and uh, he ended up in the loyalty sector. What, what should he do? What, uh, is this somebody who could be interested in the loyalty academy right away or sh how should he start his journey with loyalty? I, I believe that the foundational aspects of our industry need to be taught from the very beginning. And you present a very uh, uh, common um, situation. People get thrown in. Uh, maybe they come out of university or maybe they were in marketing communications. Maybe they were uh, brand managers or sometimes it's somebody that's technical uh, and they just get thrown in. Okay, now you're in the loyalty department. Exactly. And they're like, okay, what do I do now? And there's no time. <laughs> There's never any time to, to teach as you go. So I think that the um, flexibility that we've established at the academy is really something else that you can take the courses at night. Uh, all you need is a browser. Uh, you can take them on the weekend. You could do all 15 in a row. That would take you about 15 hours. They're about an hour each. Or you could do one every other day or one a, one a week. You can go as fast as you want. In between, you can interact with faculty. Uh, you can send out emails and ask some questions and work on your case. Uh, we have a big case study uh, included in our program and you can work on your case. So I think mm -hmm. that when you first get to that position, um, that's an ideal time uh, to go in there. And we have many people who uh, are new to loyalty that have been certified. But we also at the other end have people who've got 15, 20, 25 years, <coughs> definitely experts. And uh, it's nice to watch the interaction uh, between the two groups. Once you are certified, you're part of a community. And that community uh, reaches out to each other. Um, you know, if Komar called me and said, we need somebody in Hong Kong tomorrow, um, I can hook you up with somebody. I don't know that they would want to do it, but they're there, yeah. they're qualified, and they may be able to, you know, extend a courtesy and find you somebody else. So uh, that's that's a nice thing um, to have that community, that collaboration together. Well, that's yeah. I think that's a that's a great uh, idea to have this um, network that you can work with. Uh, Definitely. Also, okay. So summarizing, if somebody is looking for an expert in the loyalty industry, uh, he can look at your homepage, see if there is a professional who would fit their needs. And if somebody just started uh, his journey with loyalty, that's also the perfect person to join the academy and to get certified, or maybe to just you know have a peek uh, at some courses and learn a little bit more at the beginning. Um, okay, if this is all very interesting. Thank you so much, Mike, for being with us today. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to share with us? Well, Joanna and I uh, talked about um, a profile um, that I wrote a while back is published at Wise Marketer and again at the Loyalty Academy. And it, someone asked, what is the ideal profile of a loyalty marketer? Um, what kind of background should they have? Where should they come from? And I think uh, we're going to make that available to anybody who wants it, who attends today. Perfect. Uh, Thank uh, you so much. Uh, yeah, talk to Joanna. I believe that, that she has it. This is a fabulous industry, Kasia. You know that you work for one of the best companies in the industry. It's only getting bigger. 
it's not going to stop. We need to uh, recognize and reward our best customers um, if we want to be successful. So thanks for having and me. And I have to admit, you know, I ended up in loyalty also by accident. And I stayed, uh, it's been six years now, and I'm planning my future with loyalty. So there you go. There you go. Well, best Maybe of luck. Maybe I should join your, your loyalty academy as well. Okay. I hope so. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> Thank you so much once bye again. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.